All right, we're gonna get tearing into this 16 cylinder two stroke Detroit. We found this one at a scrapyard. Uh, it was for sale for about six months. Nobody wanted it. Uh, didn't know the history on it. They were told that it was seized. Uh, so we thought that we would take it home before it got shredded and disassemble it to show you guys exactly how these engines work. Very cool engines, two stroke meaning that it makes one power stroke for every revolution. Uh, they sound incredible. The engines are ambidextric, so the front is the same as the back. Um, lots of other cool stuff. There's actually two eight cylinders bolted together. We wanna to see how that is accomplished. So we took it home to disassemble it and make a video on the very coolness of these engines. When we took it home, we realized that uh, it wasn't seized and we could turn it over. We might actually get a chance to pull it over. <laughs> So we verified that it wasn't a great engine anymore. We pulled the air box covers off and we looked at the cylinders. The cylinders are scored. Couldn't really sell it as a good engine to anybody. So we had some fun, we got it running. We actually tried to create a runaway, which um, giving the fuel, the fuel full throttle and not having any coolant in it, we were hoping that it would catch on its own oil and run away and go uh, It didn't quite run away on its own, um, probably because it has so much blow by that what's happening is it's actually pushing the oil out. Um, I've already washed the engine now since, but oil was coming out of every orifice because there was so much positive crankcase pressure that the oil didn't actually have a chance to get up in the combustion chamber. Um, so we didn't get a runaway, but we did end up with uh, a hole inside the block, which was pretty cool. Uh, but now we're gonna tear into it, show you guys uh, exactly how these monsters work. And if anybody wants any parts, hit us up at thebossgarage at gmail.com. We can sell the blowers or the block or anything that's still good. Um, and when I say the block, you can have the back block. The injectors and stuff will still be good. We'll be keeping some of that. I'll probably be holding on to the air starter. But basically, we're going to disassemble it, and then it's going back to the scrapyard where it can be turned into roof steel or furniture or something or other. So, um, yeah, we're going to dive right in. Here we go. Okay, so we've got a little bit disassembled. We'll just kind of start at the top here. That little thing right there is an automatic trip. Um, there's this little lever that swings down. Uh, you flick this lever over and it actuates the shutoff on it. Now what that does is this, this thing, if you watched me in the video, I had to flip this a couple times because when we started it, it went to full throttle and it shuts the airflow off to the blowers. If the engine was to run away, even if you shut the fuel off, it would still be able to run on its own oil. Most people, when they fire it up, they, and one of the injector sticks, they think it's a runaway situation, it's not. It's actually a full throttle situation. Um, and and that, that happens because these injectors stick here. Um, if you can see that rod, when I move the throttle here, you can see the injector going in. What happens is that injector sticks and, and it gives it into a full fuel. It's giving one cylinder full fuel and it runs away. Now you swear that that's a runaway, but it's, in reality, it's only about 2300 RPM. Because it's a two stroke, it sounds like 4600 RPM and in your head, it just doesn't sound right. It's got two rockers here, but they're both exhaust valves. So the center one would be an injector, and then the outside two would be the exhaust valves. The intake valves are in the cylinders, and they're behind these covers here. And we can take that apart, um, but there's no need. We'll pull the head off, and then we'll show you how the liners work. So the air actually comes through the side of the block, and then you can see it here gets pushed into the cylinder through holes in the bottom of the cylinder by the blowers, and then the intake actually pushes the exhaust fumes out, which makes us a really cool engine. Um, this is the governor. This was actually broken when we got it. Uh, there's something going on inside here. This was all broken, so we uh, had to weld this little uh, push rod throttle on it. You can see me run that when the chunks blew out the side, actually. It was running about, I would say, two, 300 RPM and it, when, it, when it finally grenaded. 
Um, you can see we did some damage here. Uh, one of the lifters there is laying at the bottom. You can also see the springs were really loose. One of the springs, um, the valve springs, you can just see it rotate as I rev it up. So the tension on the springs wasn't right. I call it common rail because the fuel kind of goes into the injector. It's, it's a unit injector, unit injection, and it's actually a rocker that pushes on the injector, which actually creates the, uh, the pop pressure. These injectors all need to be set up the same. So uh, you can see the little set screw here and you can move that rocker in and out. So um, we're not gonna set this one up because it's broken and there's no point. Um, the scrapyard that we got this from has three or four more. So if we get into those or we sell those, we'll go over that engine and we'll show you how to set up those injectors. Um, there's no point in doing that to this and I don't have the time for that either. So this is a coolant passage that goes along the side. Uh, very simple. It comes from the uh, water pump, which looks like a nice big massive turbo on the front there. But that, that gives the coolant passage to both sides and then both sides have two thermostats to uh, control the heat. So um, yeah, we'll keep digging. Here we go. Okay, so we've got our governor off and we've got our uh, little plate off here so we can disconnect the um, throttle linkage to the rack more or less or the, the linkage to the rack. And what's nice about working on the Detroits is that you can take the head off without taking the blowers off and you can take the blower off without taking the head off. Uh, it's super simple because drop the exhaust and uh, the head comes right off because there's no um, there's not even an intake gasket because the blower takes the air and pushes it down through the block and then around the cylinders here you can see that through the air box. Okay now that we've got our air box cover off you can actually take a good look at the um, cylinder and then if you had a scope you could go through here and take a good look at the cylinders on the inside um, and then if you had the pistons lined up with the holes as you do in this one you could check out your ring condition and actually the side of the pistons. So that's what told us that the engine needed a rebuild because the, the pistons and the sleeves were scored more than my liking. Saw a lot of rust in the one. And when we opened this air box, um, actually a pile of water came out because the engine was sitting outside for so long. I took these covers off just to see if I could see the bolts that are holding it together. I couldn't. That's just cooling passages. And it's kind of neat that there is no cooling in these around these sleeves here because that's just air so it's just cold air coming in or coldish air compared to the temperature of the engines. As you can see the score marks on the on the pistons these are the ones that we were seeing through the air box and then uh, all the rust on there you can tell it wasn't firing on all the cylinders either. We kind of had a runaway and it actually knocked the whole sleeve right out of it so you can see um, where the air comes in all the way at the bottom so so that's connected to a port to the um, gasket there now if we look at a, a cylinder that's down uh, you can see the those would be your intake valves down there you can see this engine needed work and these sleeves needed to be replaced okay so I managed to pull a liner out <laughs> just by cranking the engine over one of them slid out um, and, I, and I'll put it beside the piston here so this is a full piston and you can see that if the pistons at top dead center here We've got the uh, compression rings at the top. And we also have rings at the bottom here um, because as your air is coming in, you can't have the air going down into the crankcase. So you've got a set of rings that still has to slide this full section until those holes are uncovered. And then these rings would be at the bottom of this liner. Then your air would be coming in on top of the piston. Right now, this would be the beginning of the intake stroke so your exhaust valve uh, right now all four exhaust valves would be open and your positive pressure from your blower would be blowing air through those holes and it would be pushing the exhaust out now as soon as those rings go past the holes like in this one um, you would start your compression stroke. So you've blocked off the intake ports, you're starting your compression stroke, you're coming up, you're just compressing that, that I would say three inches, it would fire the, the diesel and that would be your power stroke, it would be coming down. As soon as your um, ports are uncovered again, um, the positive pressure would uh, from your blower or your turbos if it's a 16V92, um, they had turbos and blowers, then it would be pushing that air back out again. So these engines will not run if they don't have positive pressure 
um, pushing your exhaust out. It's, it's not just one set of rings in these, which is another neat thing. But if you see the total power stroke, that's it right there now this you can see the crack here so that 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 block is completely done um did some good damage there that one looks like it's still savable uh camshaft still looks like it's in good shape um and uh, i don't see anything wrong with that but um if you notice what's neat is there's no there's no head gasket there's one gasket that sits in a just a little rubber gasket that sits in a groove on the outside and then these little sleeves, they, they pop out. And that's basically what seals it. There was a guy around town that had a bunch of these in his yard. Um, not the 16 cylinders, but the, the 60s, 71s, and 92s. He could fix anything in 20 minutes because he didn't torque anything. It was just with an impact gun, pull a head off. If you needed to redo a sleeve or a, a piston or or you bent a rod or whatever, you could pop the head off, drop the pan, pop in a new sleeve, pop in a new piston, or one that was laying in the yard because a lot of these parts are interchangeable as well. The crank from a uh, 8V71 will fit in an 8V92. Um, don't recommend it, they don't last, but they do fit. Um, basically the only difference is the bore. These 16V92s were turboed and Supercharged, I like calling them superchargers. This is a 16V71, so you can't just throw turbos on it because the pistons don't have oilers on them and then they won't last either. So it'll work temporarily, it'll be fun for a bit, but then uh, you're just gonna end up having to rebuild it anyway because you're gonna do lots of damage to the sleeves and the, the pistons. So we'll start pulling the other heads off. We will disassemble that nicely and then we'll pull the blowers off and then we'll get into the front cover and the back cover. treasure box here yeah well that there's the problem that'd be kind of cool that's kind of it's almost art look at that oh there's more in the treasure box yeah <laughs> pretty neat and I bet you that crankshaft's still fine but you know what there's about six of them on eBay for a thousand bucks I wouldn't think about selling these so I had a lot of interest in the blowers and uh, if somebody wants to pick them up that's fine there's brand new blowers for 871 on eBay for about 500 bucks, which is a pretty good deal. I wouldn't hesitate to go buy those. Um, brand new cylinder heads reconditioned on eBay for about a thousand bucks. And there's some complete running generators, 16 B71s. Uh, I think there's one for seven grand, one for 8,500. They've been up for about seven, eight months. So um, if you're looking to buy one of these, you can probably get them down to four or five grand, no problem running. Uh, good shape plus the generator on it that works Okay, so we're looking at the back of the uh, The engine now there's the flywheel. There's gears down below. And there's gears that drive the camshaft and then also the superchargers or the blowers whatever you like to call them um, There's actually a locking ring on it to keep the nut from spinning so we bolt that to that and that keeps that from backing off and one for the cam and then one for the blowers now the camshaft unfortunately can only come out the front so if you've got an issue with the camshaft um, it can only go out that way which is kind of a problem because there's another um, the only way to do that is to split it which is about as big of a job as you can um, there's seven bolts that hold the engines together and you need to get at them from behind um, I don't know if you can see that. There's one, there's one there. I'll cover in suit. I took one blower off. There's only a spline shaft that goes in between there. There's a little collar um, for oil lubrication. If you can see that, um, this feeds it oil. This is more or less a drain, and it has a little shaft in there that goes through here, and that's what drives the blower itself. I'm um, just a couple psi to push that exhaust out. Pretty cool, there's uh, a throttle linkage there. It gets tied between the two of them and gets controlled by the governor assembly, if you remember that, that was sitting here. Now, now you can use these blowers on the old hot rod engines, the old 350s and 454s and 442s. There's adapter plates to make them fit. Uh, there's adapter plates to put your uh, carbs on the top. Uh, if you want one or two or five or eight, I'm sure you can make it work. Uh, the only issue is that the entire back assembly here, um, that would have to come off and there's another plate 
that needs to go on there because this is what controls all of your um, your rack. So there's a there's a linkage that comes through here, and that gets attached to your rack here um, to move everything in unison. So um, I don't know if it's cost effective to put an old used blower on on an old engine. Uh, I seen them on eBay, brand new for like 500 bucks. So doesn't uh, there's a couple guys interested in there I'll let them know that but I don't think it's gonna work out that well I, I really wanted to show you guys this um, this is this is the rack that controls your um, injectors the injectors get pushed by the camshaft on a rocker and a follower and it pushes down and that's what actually creates your injection pressure there's only a little primer pump that gets run off the back of one of the blowers and that gives it just enough fuel to fill up the little cavity in the injector and then when this rocker comes down that's what creates the popping pressure now um, you can see you can see when you move the rack it pulls that uh, injector and um, you can see that this one is stuck see how that one's not moving compared to that one that's on a spring here and and that's not moving it um, same with that one they, they weren't doing that they were all working properly before we had it full throttle there so what you can do is take the injector lines off Take something like PV Blaster with a good uh, lubricant. So you'll, you'll use a little nozzle spray it through, we'll do that. And then basically just tap on that with the brass punch and just knock it down. Give it a little bit of vibrating. We're gonna just take a pair of vice grips and then pry on something. Let me see, see how it popped back up there? pull up on it and, and sometimes you can just free that injector. So this is what happens when it sits for a while, these injectors get stuck. So it'll fire up and it'll idle and the second that you go to uh, rev it up a little bit, it speeds up the rest of the engine and then that injector kind of takes over. And now when you move the rack, see that? It's nicely moving again, look at that, wonderful. We got one, two, three. These little bolts here are 12 point quarter inch. So I didn't have a 12 point quarter inch socket, so I just had to weld uh, a cut off wrench to a old socket. See if that works. Look at that. Done. So move the rockers. There's a little lock nut on the push rods at the back. Just take these two bolts out um, and then flip it up. Pull this pin out that connects the three and then just spin them off. Then you can get at your injector and your valves, if you will. Once you got the assemblies off, you can pull an injector out. And that's what the injector looks like. Um, pretty cool. You, that's how much fuel it gets in, out, and uh, that's just your cam that actually pumps it. So Detroit's don't actually have an injection pump, per se. Um, just a little gear, gear pump to... Uh, supply this with a couple pounds of fuel and then the unit injector gets fed from the common rail and uh, you get your compression ignition. So this being the injector is kind of cool too. Uh, they can take a lot more abuse uh, than like a regular uh, injection pump could per se. So I've heard these uh, engines running on kerosene, on oil, on vegetable oil, on gasoline. Uh, makes them a pretty tough, versatile engine uh, that, that you would want on your side if you're in the middle of nowhere. Um, and worst comes to worst, you drain the oil out of it and you're running on its own oil because apparently it runs okay for a bit without oil. So these injectors are still good. Um, I see a little tag look floating around here that says N65. You can see that. So if anybody needs the injectors, they are still good. Reliabilt N65s. So I thought this was kind of interesting. There's one head that has Mexico written on it. All the other ones just have uh, like a casting number, kind of like that uh, in the corners. Um, that's the only one that had the broken lifter on it. Um, all the other ones were okay, uh, other than we broke a couple posts for the valves because they were probably starting to float. So let me down, Mexico. Let me down. It doesn't even look like that one was firing, actually. Um, there's no smoke on there, a lot of rust on the sides. Um, so yeah, and that's what you get from it sitting for a while. You see the rust on the head itself there. Also kind of cool, the Mexico head is the only one with a, 
wooden dowel shoved in the side there because the frost plug or whatever was in there is not there anymore. Yeah, boy, I wonder how long that's been in there. That's got to be some good old hardwood. Now that we've basically got the the two engines stripped down, it's easier to see that it's pretty unique that they can bolt one eight cylinder right up to another eight cylinder. And it's only seven bolts that um, connect it together uh, down the center, one at the top, one over here, and then two down here on both sides. Um, and then it's just a, a single pan. So uh, what that means is that the engines are actually ambidestric. So the bolt pattern on the front of that block is the same as the back of the block and vice versa. So these engines are both pointing away from each other, but you could take this one engine out, turn it around, put it back in again, and bolt it right back up again. The cranks are able to go both ways. Um, and that makes the heads able to spin both ways too. Both blowers are pointing at the ends of it, so there's um, a gear set in that timing cover to blow to turn the blower from the ass end of the engine, and then there's a gear set in the front to turn the blower on the front of the engine. Um, I don't know of any others that I've ever come across that have done that, um, but that also makes it that now I've completely destroyed this one here. If somebody still wants this, this block is still good as a core. If you want to throw the money into it, you could turn this back into another good block again. Um, if you're in the middle of the ocean and um, this uh, acts up or, or breaks, disassemble it super quick, um, pull a piston out that's, that's knocking or seized or spun a bearing or whatever. Um, cover up the holes on the uh, the intake ports there so that you don't lose your compression and uh, Get it going again in an emergency situation if you've ever worked on a air-cooled Deutz um, Developed by the Germans. It's the same kind of thing where you can disassemble stuff and still have it running uh, Just to get you out of sticky situations. Um, there's no shortage of two-stroke Detroit's and army equipment but um, to get your hands on the army equipment is uh, is another thing so these are the oil filters, nothing too special about them, just an oil cooler behind it. So you would get um, coolant running from your water pump that goes right through. On a single V8, you just wouldn't have this adapter to connect the two coolers together. Um, makes it super simple to just add the two. Uh, lots of little ports to run extra cooling lines. I imagine these would go to heaters and stuff in the trucks, but not necessary in this uh, application. Okay, so this is the scary part. I need to get the flywheel off so that I can get that bolts that go into the oil pan housing, the intermediate plate. It looks really heavy. So I'm just gonna hope for the best, really. It looks heavy. It feels heavy. You can do it. <laughs> I was right. I think I'll just leave that right there. I just need to get that, that one and that one. I think that's it. All right, so this is a turbo twin air starter on it. And that's pretty neat just in the fact that if you take this housing out and spin it around that way, you can make the engine spin the opposite way. So um, these engines will run backwards. They're um, used in the marine a lot, especially with like a twin screw because they'll have one engine turning clockwise, the other one turning counterclockwise. The only thing different is this starter or in the way it's set up. I remember if uh, we had an old truck at the shop, um, it had the four cylinder in it, but uh, if you would, wouldn't hold the starter long enough and it would come up on compression and then bounce back, Sometimes it would still catch and it would run backwards. You'd have 18 reverse gears and two forward gears. Um, you shut it off, no big deal. Fire back up again and it'll run the proper way. So we're going to take that starter off. Um, we'll use that for something else. Uh, use, there's four more engines available to us um, that are a little bit more practical and hasn't been uh, sitting out in the elements for so long. And then we will do something Cool with those, but those are still a couple months away before we are able to get those. So, here we go. Okay, so I dropped this pan, uh, and I didn't need to take the flywheel out. It looked like I did, but the bolts went this way, not the other way, and I didn't feel the heads of it. I saw the mold in there, 
but I didn't see the heads, so I thought they came from the other way, but they, somebody just didn't put those bolts back in again. Tricked me, um, but never had to drop this type of pan before, so um, you don't have to drop that heavy flywheel. See that through that hole? Um, now that we've dropped this, you can check out, I really wanted to see how that crankshaft is put together. And let me just see, there it is, check that out. Um, it's just bolted together, there's nothing, nothing to it. Uh, you, you, you'd wonder how they would uh, line bore that to make that fit, but um, somehow they make it work. Uh, I also pulled the one piston, I accidentally hit the record button halfway through my spiel so you missed me actually pulling it out. But this is the connecting rod that broke and it didn't even score the, um, the bearing really. It scored the bearing but the crankshaft actually still looks okay. So we're going to pull that piston, we're going to knock that out of that big old rusty bore and then we will uh, um, maybe pop the liner out, keep that as a souvenir and then we're done with the engine. So here we go. The liner's not coming out without a fight but you can see, you can see all the scoring that's on there. Now we might have done some of that but I'm sure that there was some of that before too. I got big hands and uh, pretty cool. That's a big monster friggin piston. So, um, yeah, we're gonna do something cool with that one. Right now we're gonna clean up. All right, so pretty well done with this two stroke here. I hope we did the engine a little bit of justice yet before it went to its final resting place. Um, it was destined for the shredder. We just did a little detour with it. Uh, never intended to get it running. We happened to get it running and we uh, gave it the final Viking send off. I know some of you guys were upset about that, but the entire point of taking this engine home was to take it apart and kind of do what we just did. Quick overview of how it works. When we get um, one of the good running ones back to the shop, we'll uh, show you guys how to set up the rack and tune that one nicely. If any of them sell, we'll go over them, we'll do an oil analysis and stuff on them and, and really make sure that uh, if you're interested in buying any of them or if you're looking at an older engine, we'll show you what to look for. Um, I don't know exactly what's happening with this one. There's a couple people interested in the blowers and odds and ends and stuff like that. I think I'm gonna keep the air starter because I think we'll do something cool with one of the two strokes eventually, but right now we don't have time for anything else. Um, hope you enjoyed the video. Hopefully we did this engine some justice before it finally uh, goes back into turning into maybe coffee tables or roof tin or who knows. Um, anyway, thanks for watching. Sorry if I upset you guys about uh, destroying this one, but uh, it was already destroyed. If you ask me, it's been sitting outside for six months. Um, I know we could have saved it if we pulled all the liners and we did a complete rebuild and sent all the heads off. You got $10,000 in an engine that just really honestly is too big and impractical to do anything. I couldn't even take it off the trailer because I don't have a forklift big enough that would lift that thing up. Never mind putting it in something and then driving it nowhere because it's too loud, obnoxious, and stupid. We had people telling me you should just keep it on a trailer and take it to car shows. And if you see a four cylinder or six cylinder or an eight cylinder, um, you might be able to do something cool with that. They're heavy, they're kind of underpowered, they're really loud, and that's part of the cool factor on them. So, anyway. Thanks for watching guys. Check out all the other build videos. We've got uh, car restorations back from scratch. We've got tractor engine rebuilds. We've got crew cab Studebaker trucks that we're building with Cummins. We've got race cars um, with LS swap, four turbo, Audi, Quattro all wheel drive. We got a 67 GTO, it's just about ready for paint. Um, lots of cool stuff going on, not just uh, destroying engines. This is actually the first time we've ever done that. So um, thanks for watching, here we go.